Hello and welcome to episode number nine in my scripting series. Today we are looking at built-in functions. So we already know how to create functions. If you don't already, then make sure you check out the previous videos. I'll leave a link in the card in the top right corner or in the description because uh, we've covered functions, parameters, arguments, all that good stuff. And it will be useful for you to know. So a function we already know is a predefined bit of code that we can run later on in the script to save time to you know be efficient etc um, but there are also some functions which are predefined we don't need to define them they're already there because roblox have coded them in the back end and um, they are used to make life easier for us so let's imagine that they're just built into roblox lua okay so behind the scenes already made the script knows what they mean but we can call them on in, in our scripts to do things which will just simply make life easier for us. So I've picked out a couple here. Um, if you wanted to find some built in functions, you can go to view, click on the object browser, select an object from the left panel here, and then on the right, you will see these pink. Uh, little icons and then what they mean is that that is a built-in function so the pink icons are built-in functions and then we've also got some blue ones and yellow ones but don't worry about those yet we're only interested in the built-in functions which are the pink ones and uh, each object has its own built-in function there will be some built-in functions that only apply to certain objects um, and we can call them to do things and some of them are quite self-explanatory you won't need to know all of them. You're only going to need to know a couple for now. Some of them will you will not understand, so don't worry about it. But we're going to take some easy ones today, such as clone and destroy. I'll let you work out what they do. Um, quite self-explanatory. So we've got the destroy uh, built-in function, which we can use on an object. We can call it on a certain object. Say, for example, this part that we have in the workspace, we could call our built-in function called destroy on it and guess what it's going to delete the part from the game we've got the clone built-in function that is going to create a duplicate of the object which we call it on and uh, you can see where this is going to go so we're going to focus on the first two probably the easiest built-in functions out there so how do we use these built-in functions obviously we've not defined them and to call a normal function we just say destroy right so maybe you're thinking that we we put the parts reference in here so we say game.workspace.part no that's not how it works because we can't pass any arguments to this function because it doesn't take any what we're going to do to destroy an object and um, now this is this this type of function there are two types of built-in functions so um our destroy and clone and clear all children which we'll get to later but um these ones here are all about doing something to a particular object so for example we are trying to destroy this part so what we're doing is we are calling this function on a specific object so in that case it's called a member function now these ones down here aren't to do with any objects or anything we can just we can just literally say wait or print we don't have to call wait on a part or an object because um their their, their purpose is not related to any objects in the game so they are just global functions global built-in functions so we have two types, but they're all built-in functions. So to use the member functions, the ones like destroy, clone, and clear all children that are actually going to do something to an object, so either destroy it, clone it, etc., we can just firstly get the get the item, get the object's reference in the game. So in this case, game.workspace dot part. Okay, that is the reference to the object in the game. We have now accessed that part. But what are we going to do? We want to destroy it. So we say a colon, and now you can see that we've done that colon. That just basically means that we're going to do something. We're going to call a function on this part, a built-in function. And the script has seen that we've put the colon in there. And then the IntelliSense, which is basically finding, trying to determine what you're going to say and try to pre-fill your next, uh, what you're trying to write, it shows up all of these different uh, built-in functions. So we're just going to do destroy. And you can see it's added destroy with our 
brackets on the end. You have to have the brackets on the end. You can't just say destroy. We say that we have the brackets on the end because it tells the script that we are running a built-in function on it. So you get your reference of the part or your object. Once you've got your, your, your objects, you can then call a built-in function on it. So if we run this script, look at this part, hopefully it will get destroyed. And there we go, it's gone. We ran the game and immediately as we as the game started, this script ran itself and it basically got the part and destroyed it. So simple, uh, very, very easy stuff. So same goes for the clone as well. We can just say clone and our pair of brackets on the end so it knows it's an, we're, we're running a function on this part. Run the game and what do you think is gonna happen? There is actually two parts now in the game you just can't see them and that is because what's happened is it's um, created a clone of this part we've ran the the inbuilt function but what's happened is the, the the script has cloned it it's done the right thing but it doesn't know where to put this clone so we've cloned an object and it's probably out there somewhere it just doesn't know the script doesn't know where to put this, so it's not going to put it in the workspace because we haven't told it to. We haven't told the clone of this part where to go. So what we need to do is we need to um, set this as a variable. So this function, what it's going to do, and we learned about this in previous videos, we can return data from a function. So let's say we had a function to um, create a part, okay? We would run the function, it would create the part, but then if we wanted to do something to it afterwards, like change a property, we, would, we wouldn't be able to because we haven't got that part that we created in the function. So we can return it and return it back to where we called it from. And when we do that, we then have a reference to that part. And it's the same thing here. We've cloned the part, but we haven't actually saved a reference to that part. That part is, you know, it's it's outside of any service. It's not in the workspace because we don't know, the script doesn't know where to put it. So what we need to do is we need to save it, well not save it, but tie it to a variable. So we could have a variable called my clone. And then what's happening is we're calling the clone function and what's, what's, what's happening is it's making a clone of this part and then it's automatically going to get returned back to this variable because the, the clone inbuilt function uh, returns the cloned part, the cloned object, back to where you called it from automatically because you can't say clone it and then dot parent equals workspace or I want the clone to have transparency of one you can't do that for loads of properties you can't just set its properties like that so you have to set it as a variable it creates a copy of this part returns it so that we now have a variable reference of the cloned part because we can't just clone it and say game.workspace.part2 it's going to have the same name and it's not even going to be in the workspace yet so we have to have it referenced as a variable and now that we've done that we now have a way to access this cloned part and we can say my clone.parent equals workspace or game.workspace so What's happened is it's cloned it all right, but it just doesn't know where to put it. So it's outside of the game currently. So now if we run it again, again, you'll see one part, but that's because it's been cloned and a clone of the part is an exact replica, an exact duplicate. So it's gonna be in the same position, right? Let's open up the workspace and boom, we have two parts, an exact clone of the other in the same position, we can drag them away, we now have two parts. So whenever you're saying clone on an object, you have to um, have it stored as a variable and that way you can then set its parent property to wherever you want it to go. So yes, it creates a clone, but it doesn't know what to do with it. So that's why you have to have it as a variable. Uh, you don't have to do that with destroy, you don't have to do that at all, it's just with the clone function because obviously you're creating a new object from this part and then you just need to tell the script where it goes. So we've done destroy, we've done clone. Congratulations, you now know two built-in functions, so not as hard as you think. Um, so we've got one more member function to go, one that I'm just going to show you. Um, you're probably not going to use it yet, but good to know anyway and it's called clear all children and what this is going to do is when you 
call it on a part or an object because it's a member function so we call it on an object let's say for example we had a part and inside of this part um, I don't know why we've got a weld in there let's get rid of that but inside of the part we had loads of things in it okay so we had maybe a texture or a decal or a click detector or maybe we even had a uh, fire particle right or some awesome uh, smoke okay all of these things the click detector the fire the smoke the decal and the texture they are children of the part because we have put them inside of it you can see here in the hierarchy in the explorer we can see that the click detector fire smoke and all these th children are kind of like indented you can see that they're inside that part we can collapse it we can open it we can see that these things are inside this part so in that case these things are the children of that part and the part is the parent of all of them the, think of it like a like a parent and a child, right? The, these are the children. These are the things that this part is looking after, the, the things that are inside that part. Whenever we move the part, it goes with them because they're inside of them. These things are inside of the part. So they are children and the part is the parent of them. So when we say clear all children on an object, what we're saying is delete anything that's a child of this object. So delete anything inside the part. So when we say game.workspace.part and then colon, because it's an inbuilt function, we're calling a function on this part. When we say clear all children, it's going to delete everything inside of the part. So the click detector, the fire, the smoke, the decal, the texture, and the weld. Let's run the game and see what happens. So as soon as it runs, as soon as the script starts, boom, all the particles are gone. And, and you can see the part has no more children. They've all been destroyed because we have called clear all children. So that was another interesting inbuilt function for you. Uh, we're just going to go over the last two now, and these are the global ones. So wait, wait is probably the easiest one of them all. What it does is you can take an argument in this one. So when we say you can take an argument, we can pass some data to this function, and that's going to um, change or impact the way it works. So in this case, we can pass a number of seconds to the wait function, and then it's going to delay the script for that amount of time. So if we said five seconds, so wait five, it's going to pause the script for five seconds, and it's not going to run anything that comes after this wait statement until five seconds are up. Now let's test this out, and if we run the game, we can see we've got our children, but after five seconds, you can see they all get deleted. So what's happened is the script has waited for five seconds before it has carried on. And that is what wait allows you to do. It allows the script to stop and wait for a number of seconds before it continues. So it's a nice way to have some delays or to, you know, if you had loads of lines of code running at once and you want, wanted to see a difference or wanting to see something change, that's where you would use a wait um, a function. Or even if you had a round, you might want to wait 50 seconds each round and that's going to be the, the length of the round you get where I'm coming from so that is the wait built-in function and we have one last um, built-in function which you probably don't know why we use it but it's used all the time in scripting and it's called print it allows you to print a message to the output window down here you may be thinking it's a bit pointless but if we have a script that isn't working and we want to determine where it's breaking, where it's where it's erroring, and, and what's not working. We can use printing to send messages to the output at certain times to see where the script stops working or where you know it does work. So printing it lets you send a message to the output and you can send a data type. So if you wanted to send some text, we would send a string and we'd have it in um, in speech marks. So we could say hello guys and then after the wait five seconds it's going to print out hello guys in the output so let's have a look should be doing it around about now there we go it's printed it out so it's a way to send a message from the script but you have to say print you can see how it's also in 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 blue um the weight and the print because they are global functions um that it's printing out these messages you can also print out numbers um, but you can't print out things like game.workspace.part because that's an object it's not a piece of text if you wanted to print out game.workspace.part, you'd have to put it in a string. But there we go. Uh, we've done five inbuilt functions, built-in functions, however you want to call them in this video. Probably the most important ones and the ones you're going to be using the most in scripting. There are way more 
built-in functions, but you don't need to know them yet. We'll be going over them another day, so there we go. Um, don't forget to use star code Alvin Blocks when you buy premium or Robux uh, on, on Roblox, and uh, that way I'll make 5% of your purchase. It's a great way to support the channel at no extra cost. If you want to become a member as well, you can click the join button underneath the video. You get loads of cool perks at different tiers, so check that out. The next video will be on your screen now, uh, and also the playlist as well if you want to go back and see some more videos. Don't forget to subscribe, click the Alvin Blocks logo in the middle of your screen, like and share the video with anybody who you think this would be beneficial to, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.